not just asking for handouts. Mm. We're, we're saying well, we've got this brilliant product, and we're also having this incredible impact. Uh, and I think that's that's what's really exciting about social enterprise. Um, and I think we said this before. The, the way we were kind of envisaging it is Australians only donate a certain amount per year. So there's this kind of finite amount of cash that's donated to different causes every year. And I think social enterprises uh, have the opportunity to, to increase that pool independently. So you're not just taking donations from some other charity. Right. You're actually increasing the size of the pool that's being donated and, and making an impact. Yep. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we had in the studio, I had a great time chatting with a couple of young entrepreneurs. Jim and Sandy are the founders of Nice Coffee. This is an incredible social enterprise, really with a passion to help inspire education amongst some of Kenya's poorest and most disadvantaged young children. They work and partner with a school in the slums of Kibera, and you get to hear a lot about that story But in order to do that, they founded a coffee business. And this coffee business is primarily a roastery that started out servicing uh, small to medium-sized businesses. But like a lot of people, when COVID hit, they had to pivot. And they now actually have a a delivery van, uh, actually a a van that, that goes out and provides coffee, as well as a delivery service for people at home to make sure they're stocked up while they're working at home on some good Java. Um... Guys, I I had a great time chatting with them, and uh, we really honed in, I think, on the why. You know, if you've got a, a really strong why, a passionate reason why you want to make a social impact, you want to see justice in this world, then you'll make a way. And these guys have done just that. I know their story will inspire you. And uh, without further ado, here's my conversation with Jim and Sandy from Nice Coffee. Jim, Sandy, thanks for coming in to the studio here thanks. on the Gold Coast. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, we, uh, pleasure. Appreciate the opportunity. Awesome, man. And uh, you bought me some lovely coffee pods um, from your coffee company, but yes. you're you're primarily a roaster, the nice coffee company, social enterprise. I'm reading it, what it says on your shirt here. It says social coffee, tackling prop- poverty. Profit. Mate... <laughs> Yeah, not property. No, no, no. <laughs> poverty. I haven't gone into that game quite yet. No, but, uh, we're looking. We're looking. <laughs> yeah. So, tell me a bit about who you are. Give us the snapshot, and um, yeah, yeah, what you're all sure. about. I'll, I'll kick it off, um, Sandy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think like this all started. Um, I probably date it back to 2007, um, when my parents decided to to move over to Africa. And they started a business over there. Um, I think, well, yeah, we first went on a holiday. And I remember having my seventh birthday um, in Nairobi, you know, overlooking the national park and just, yeah, incredible looking over a giraffe and rhino. Um, and then, yeah, it was a year later. I think dad became involved in um, in a few school projects over there through a, I think, a Byron Bay um, charity. And so he went back without the family and then, yeah, a year later he comes back to Australia and literally without telling us, um, he, w- I remember we were having lunch um, somewhere and he tells the family that he'd bought a, a property over there. And oh, I think mum was in tears. And, oh, um, no. He just tells the whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your mum didn't even it was, know? Um, it oh, was one of those weird bizarre things um i i sometimes call it maybe a midlife crisis um yeah but yeah it's definitely changed our lives um dad wasn't too sure what to do with the property at the start but it was like prime prime um location right on the national park in nairobi Mm. and so the obvious thing was to turn it into a safari lodge um now my parents obviously they have no experience in tourism Um, you know, in Australia, let alone Kenya. They're just, you know, farmers. I grew up on a farm Mm. just down in New South Wales. So this was a a big, big move. And um, it it turns out mum 
Well, now mum absolutely loves it. It's her, wow. her passion. Um, yeah, she it's her pride and joy, the lodge. Um, but yeah, I guess over the years, you know, um, as it turned into a safari lodge, it took a lot longer than expected, you know, Kenyan politics, mm. all of that. Mm-hmm. But um, we did become more and more involved with um, these school projects and in particular this school in Kabira slum. Um, and that was through a, a, another Australian um, um, charity. Mm. But unfortunately, I think it was 2012, this charity pulled out of the school. Oh, I think wow. it was, um, you know, funding reasons, not sure. Mm. But my dad kind of, you know, he stepped in and, and took it as his his project. And, um, yeah, I guess when, when people ask me, like, why – social enterprise why um you know why this school it really is um i guess my dad and and Mm. his kind of inspiration he's probably you know he he probably wouldn't know what social enterprise is but he's probably the greatest social entrepreneur that i know Wow! you know ever since moving to kenya um he's just been involved in so many different projects whether it be you know, lion conservation, um, yeah, this school um, treating infections with um, tea tree, which is um, okay. what we we used to grow down in New South Wales. Mm. Yeah, all these different projects and that's what's really inspired me to get involved and, and take this on, take this school on and, and starting Nice Coffee Co. as mm. the means to do that. Mm. Yeah. And as you've grown, you've brought along friends for the ride. Absolutely. Friends you've known for a long time. Yeah. yeah so uh, Jim and I, we met in uh, in high school. Yeah. And I didn't realize, like, we became friends. Um, and, I, well, at least I hope we did. I think we did. And one day it was a free dress day. And uh, Jim was wearing the, the Kenyan Rugby Sevens uh-huh. jersey. And, like, like, I was used to – so I grew up uh, for the first, like, four years of my life in, in Kenya – and kind of okay. always, uh, always a lot like loved and like always planned to to go back to Kenya and, and yep. live there eventually. And um, anyway, K- Jim was wearing this like Kenyan rugby sevens jersey, and so I was like, "What on earth is this? Like, how does yeah. this guy even know about Kenya?" Uh-huh. And then he told me. So we we're already friends. And he told me the story uh-huh. about how his his dad, uh, you know, just uprooted the whole family and took uh-huh. them over to Kenya when he he was seven. And um, and it wasn't long after that 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 I'd. Uh, you know, weaseled my way in and, and managed to get a flight over to Kenya. And uh, I went and lived <laughs> with, with the Chapmans over there for a month over Christmas. In, mm. uh, it must have been year 10. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And, um, and that's, that's when I first went into, into the school in the middle of Kibera slum, which is um, it's the largest slum, slum in Africa. Mm. It's, it's, it's ginormous, about a million people, but mm. they don't actually know how many people are in there. Um, wow. And the government kind of refuses to accept it as a as a uh, a dwelling <laughs> of people yeah. yeah yeah so that's how we first met and mm. then um you know I kicked it off and I think six months in uh, I realized you know I can't do this alone mm. um way more fun and and to bring people on board so Sandy and, and Nathaniel another good friend um came on board and we kind of took this on um at full pace mm. yeah I love that we have spent, you know, all this time up until this point talking about why and what has driven you to do what you do Um, because, you know, I've known what it's like to start something and unless you really know why and what you're passionate about, you'll you'll get a certain long uh, uh, ways down the track and you'll hit an obstacle or there'll be a challenge here and there and and you'll be tempted to kind of think, well, maybe... It's not meant to be. Mm. Now I'd love to just hear what is the, what is the means, what is the method to, um, what is the the coffee company uh, side of things that actually um, you've kind of latched onto to actually, you know, be a means of support to this incredible work in in Nairobi. Yeah, I think um, well, I first heard about this idea of, of social enterprise. It was at university. Um, so I'm, I'm studying a Bachelor of Business and Commerce, still am. Mm. Um, and, 
you know, spending all this time in, in class, in the lectures, learning about, like, you know, profit maximization, mm-hmm. um, you know, across the board in business, whether it be accounting, economics, mm-hmm. um, you know, management. It's all about, I don't know, maximizing the profit of our shareholders, um, you know, biggest margins, you know, that sort of thing. And yeah. I couldn't help but contrast this, like, because every few months I was, I was heading back over to Kenya mm. and, you know, you can't help but contrast these two bizarre, crazy worlds. Um, you know, uh, like I was so privileged with my education and, and I guess our high school education. Mm. And then going into the school for the first time, it's just like, it's just the other end of the spectrum. Mm. You know, I, I couldn't compare it to any, anything else. I'd ever seen, you know, kids with like absolutely nothing and yet holding on to this um this primary education as their their one thing of hope that could wow. potentially get them, you know, out of this crazy cycle of poverty. Mm. So um, I'm coming back and forth mm. between Australia and Kenya and, you know, learning about maximising profit for our shareholders, something just didn't really sit right with me. Um you know, it didn't quite make sense. And then we actually had a guest speaker um, come in and he was, he was um, I think it was West African, and he mm. started a social enterprise. And this is when that, you know, this kind of field is just starting to kick off. Yeah, yeah. And, and he'd started one in West Africa and he said, you know, he couldn't promote it enough. He couldn't encourage us wow. to start something that is more aligned towards social and environmental, impact. you know, impact yeah. instead of just the traditional profit maximizing path. And that really resonated with me. Mm. And um, so I did a bit of research. Um, I looked into it. And the first thing that comes up, um, Social Enterprise Australia, is thank you. Mm. You know, and I think we all kind of idolize them a bit. They're... Um, they're incredible leaders in this space in Australia. Mm-hmm. And I was fascinated by the idea of using products, you know, that people are already buying or drinking in our case, you know, mm. every single day. Yeah, I think we drink in Australia like 22 million cups a day, something ridiculous, wow. you know. Yeah. Of coffee or? We love our coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah. course. And um, so that that's kind of what, me, what gave me the idea and... Yeah. Um, Coffee was that means. Yeah. I just just being on campus alone, students are drinking so many cups a day, yeah. and um, I thought, now what a great medium this could be. Yeah, and it coincides with um, I think there's like uh, at the moment, especially in our generation, there's this huge uh, hunger to be a conscious consumer. Mm-hmm. Um, people people want to become more sustainable. They mm-hmm. want to they want to be having an impact um, mm. when they consume and when they buy a product. And uh, it's incredible because it holds all these companies accountable, mm. Um, mm. and so I think it's it's kind of it's co- we've coincided with with that sort of time, and that's uh, that's uh, that's allowed us to have a lot of success so far. For sure, you know, it makes me think that um, there is this still this ability to it's not one or the other somehow, right? Like. Mm. Um, the traditional non-for-profit model can can just be just really hard to sustain itself and it just relies on just continual just giving and giving, but right. it's not built into it a sense of, well, how can it sustain itself? Like it totally. doesn't seem to yeah. be, it's more like the handout mentality rather yeah. than the, the leg up, right? And so right. like it, it's encouraging to see young mm. guys like you just like launch into it, well, we're still studying, we're still yeah. learning, but why can't we start and get, get the ball rolling at maximising profit and social impact? Like, yeah. like it's, it seems like a short-term game to just focus on, on the profit side because when society is impacted negatively just because pure profits like climate change and we only have limited mm-hmm. resources and we see the effects of that, it's not... Yeah. It's going to come back to bite us in the end, isn't it? Right. Whereas if you can marry the two, you can probably help 
yeah. impact on both I ends. I, I don't know if that. I th- yeah, no, I think you've hit the uh, the nail on the head there, Tim. I think that's like why social um, enterprises are, are so effective or, or so promising for us, and that's why we like them. They're a lot more scalable. We feel, and uh, you're not just asking for handouts. Mm. You're you're saying, well, we've got this brilliant product, and we're also having this incredible impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's that's what's really exciting about social enterprise. Um, and I think we said this before, the, the way we were kind of envisaging it is Australians only donate a certain amount per year. So there's this kind of finite amount of cash that's donated to different causes every year. And I think social enterprises uh, have the opportunity to, to increase that pool independently. So you're not just taking donations from some other charity. Right. You're actually increasing the size of the pool that's getting donated and, and making an impact, which I think is really wow, cool. Wow, that is really a great way to look at it. <laughs> Sandy does a lot of deep thinking at night, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you're studying, so we alluded to that, you're, you're study, you mentioning out before we came in the studio, you're studying research. Yeah. And y- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing genetics research. Genetics um, research. Yeah, so Jim and I are both still at uni. I'm at, at UQ in yep. Brisbane and um, Jim's at Bond doing business. Um, yeah, yeah, which is, is it's been uh, a, a challenge juggling juggling the two, but uh, incredibly rewarding. Yeah, and, um, you know, we've had social enterprises on the podcast already. I think we've, we've had... One of the first ones was um, James Bartle yeah. from Outland Denim. Ah, that was an incredible Dude. interview. And did, uh, I just realised I'm wearing his um his jeans. Hey man, me so too. So comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the odd one out. So good. Yeah. yeah, get with the program. Yeah, right. you, didn't, you didn't get the dress code for today's interview. Did yeah, you? well, Jim was lucky to get shoes on me this morning. Uh, I, uh, oh, well, yeah. We got we got halfway down here and uh, I realised I'd forgotten my shoes, <laughs> <laughs> so we had to turn back around. <laughs> You can you, don't, you can you can be barefoot around here, no no worries. <laughs> yeah, I got that vibe. I got yeah. that vibe. Yeah. So we've had, and and I think it's you know we've had Mantua Sewing um, Social Enterprise on. Uh, we've had yeah. the lecturer of Social Enterprise, the Guru herself, Dr. Ruth Knight. Yeah. And did you find that they are? Uh, there's this incredible before you were talking, and I thought it was this incredible quote. It was uh, by Viktor Frankl mm. um, in Man's Search for Meaning, and he says. Uh, Anyone with a why can withstand any how. And I think that that's often like the story with uh, social enterprises. Yes. They find their, their why before their, their how. Yes. Um, and you're so going to find a way, one yeah, way or another, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what you're passionate about. I think that's, about. that's what happened with, with the school. Um, and I'd be interested, is that, do you think that's been happening with uh, the other social enterprises that you've interviewed? A hundred percent because yeah. each of them, and I know them quite personally and, and we talk and I, 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 I lead a charity myself and, and, you know, so we can empathize and sympathize with the struggles. I mean, it is hard work and anyone that owns their own small business or is, is in the trenches trying to make things happen, it doesn't matter what, how things look on the outside, it is. I mean, there's constantly roadblock roadblocks to uh, to the what you've got to overcome. I mean, last year, 2020, threw everyone into a spin, yeah. and you know, for many people in the world, it it's still, you know, really challenging. Um, yeah. And I, I think you're right. Like, you just need a why to uh, to get through that to push you through. I think Daniel Flynn, uh, the founder of Thank You Order, has this incredible story of just uh, being in in university and just like having this crippling like uh, uh, like uh, guilt about about all these kids having to uh, um, cart water all the way back to their village like walking 20 k's to get water carting it back and mm. then uh, and and then having having people in the community dying of waterborne diseases mm. like cholera and mm. diphtheria and uh, so I think I think everyone starts out with a why which I think is is incredibly interesting yeah, yeah. and that why is often something that impacts you and touches you in a very personal, real way. It's yeah. one thing to kind of maybe watch a documentary, and some people do, and and they're in, you know started watching a, a Four Corners documentary on the the Uyghurs in in Xinjiang, I think oh it wow. is in China, yeah. that are just some of the most persecuted 
people on on this planet uh, over a million imprisoned the most ever since the holocaust i mean these yeah. things have just incredibly gut-wrenchingly it just blows your mind what they're going through and and again for a lot of people it seems distant when it's just a statistic or it's something so far away but when when injustice or when mm. when something that just doesn't seem so right intersects with your world mm. your family mm. It, it yeah. changes everything. It, that's the moment that, that gets you Yeah, I think we were just, yeah. like, incredibly lucky to... I mean, Jim had been into the slum before, but just, like, as we were in year 10 and we were going into this, like, this slum, which, um, I mean, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe it in words, but it's, uh, you know, you walk over this bridge and there's raw sewage. It's just mm. a bridge over raw sewage, like a kind of wooden plank bridge. Um, and then you're in this absolute maze of it's like a there's a canop- canopy of um corrugated iron that's like rusted mm. so you duck underneath this corrugated iron canopy and um it's all just mud walls built wow. from from just like a, a garbage heap so there's like plastic bags packed, packed into the into mud, it, yeah. mud walls and it's it's honestly it's a maze it's uh mm. um if we weren't being let in we'd uh get completely lost and yeah. uh and we'd take in i think uh like we, there were, so the guys who were armed taking us in, into there to get to the school because you have to go through uh, a few different, different gang territories. Regions. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can imagine. I honestly, know. honestly, yeah. and there's and so uh, these guys are like, um, they have pistols, kind of like at the ready. Yeah, and um, and guide us through. But like the only thing, the thing that was uh, most reassuring is Josiah, the principal of the school, was with mm. us, and it's just incredible seeing how how the community responded right. to him. Everyone just. Just had so so much respect for him, yeah. Um, and he he really is our boots on the ground, ground there. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think you're you're so right with um, you know, being so close to the the issue at hand. Mm. I guess one of our biggest challenges is that Africa seems like a world away um, to people here in Australia. Yeah, you know, we're pretty familiar with um, Asia, with with America, Europe, but Africa, you know. Some a lot of people don't know whether it's a country or a continent, let alone you know what's going on, yeah. you know, on the ground, and that's been yeah a big challenge. Uh, us trying to you know show people, and I, we've been so lucky with um you know visual media mm-hmm. help with help from people like um, Jude Kalman, yeah, you know, creating a film for us because when people see visually yeah. what it's like. It, it makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. We were actually, um, it was on the Gold Coast here, we were um, pitching at an event. Mm. Um, it was just like a startup business pitch. And we ended up, uh, I think we won the pitch. Yeah, we just got the <laughs> People's Choice Award. <laughs> yeah. Gold Coast. We, I noticed um, you, got a few, you got a few awards, right? You uh, s- social entrepreneur finalists as well as the, yeah. what was that award you were talking about there? The um. Yeah, we recently awarded, I think it was um, a, a Global Change Makers Award. Global Change yeah, Makers Award. I don't think that's been announced yet, but... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so do so we need to edit that yeah, out yeah. of the... Uh, no, it's fine, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, we, we met... Congratulations, <laughs> man, that's <laughs> awesome. You. Cheers. Um, but yeah, we met Jude at the end of the night and she happened to be coming over to East Africa um, at the end of the year. Yeah. And... She said, you know, uh, if you can come over a- and meet us there, we'll make a, a short film for your story, for your for your school and for your company, Nice Coffee Co. We got back, booked our flights straight away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We took up on that offer. And, wow. Um, that she, um, she joined us with um, a Channel 9 um, mm-hmm. reporter with a Gold Coast photographer, Whitney Palmer, and... Um, they they just helped us um, shape and, and tell our story so so well, yeah. um, visually through through the short film. We've got a uh, Whitney published a coffee table book, oh my which goodness. we give to. Uh, That's so I should have brought one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, we give to all of our new clients, and they can just you know leave it in their like waiting room for everyone to see. Yeah. The sort of impact that their coffee's having. Yeah, and we wanted to show them the school, so we um mm. with all the camera gear, we took them into. Uh, into Kibera slum and did the whole, like, you know, had to get the guides in, the armed guards. Um, 
and we got in there and it was just incredible. So you go through this like corrugated iron jungle yeah. and uh, navigate the maze and it opens out to the school and it's full wow. of just like 400 like laughing, smiling, like Beautiful. incredibly happy kids. And, um, and we got there and so we were doing kind of our filming for this short documentary and, um, and Josiah, the principal, took us aside and he was, he, he was obviously uh, a bit disturbed uh, and he just he just had a meeting with uh, a member of the government, and they were um, they were going to close the school down. Um, then they'd already closed a hundred other schools, like like St John's schools, mm. uh, down. And um, and Josiah was was distraught, and um, and we said, surely surely there's a way we can get around this. And uh, he said, the only way is is to um, is to re like is to re roof the buildings because the the government officials' excuse was uh, was that they, the roofs were unsafe. But yeah. really, they just didn't want to pay. Um, they they are meant to fork out a bit of money to each primary sure. school, and they didn't want to pay that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so that kind of gave us the why. So mm. um, we had the reporter with us, and we decided that we may as well start this campaign. Uh, to re-roof and it ended mm. up being to rebuild uh, a lot of the the buildings uh, at the school. So uh, that was incredible. So we got back and um, from from Kenya and we got on to uh, the morning breakfast channels and wow. um, and and we told them that we we're starting this GoFundMe and uh, and we needed I think it was what was it was it thirty grand at the time to. Yeah. To redo all the roofs, which is just incredible. Like thirty grand wouldn't get you that far in Australia. No, but uh, Better get you the permits. To yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Whatever. And we uh, we're gonna like yeah, pretty much reconstruct this whole school for mm-hmm. a thirty grand. And um, so we got on the Today Show, and I remember um, driving back after the, in- the interview. It was a live interview, and um, and you get a notification every time you go yeah. fund me account gets gets a donation. Yeah, it was. It was pinging off. I think we were at like ten grand before we hit the car. Yeah, yeah, it like and it was just this like the biggest the most dopamine hit I think I've ever received. The most incredible <laughs> thing, and just to just to see uh, all these other people just like sharing in your journey, and like mm. they're buying in, and there's just complete and utter trust. There's like trust in in, in you that you'll uh, that you'll deliver on on what you promise, and um, just so much faith and. Uh, that was incredible for us. That was like, okay, the Australian public like still cares. Like, uh, yeah. um, and yeah, I mean, that was just, a, it's like such a beautiful experience yeah. and that really kicked off our journey. That's where we were like, okay, this is, uh, this is yeah. serious. Like, um, uh, they've trusted us and, and, and now we have to deliver. Um, and, and so that was like, that was all just Jude Carmen who you've, uh, you've had on got this podcast. <laughs> and so she got us started, which is, we, so we're forever in her, uh, uh-huh. her death. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so good. Um, let's make it a little real because there's probably a lot of people listening, um, and um, maybe they've got an idea. Maybe they're trying to figure out, or they've got their why, and they're trying to figure out, well, how do I, how do I, do this? How do I make it happen? Can you, can you think of some of the, you know, you got the kickstart to get going, but that mm. kind of does last so long, right? There's only yeah. so many days of 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 those moments, and you could you could say Outland Denim, who we've had on, and remember that time when For Meghan sure. Markle wore the the jeans and it kind of took things to a new level, but yeah. there's challenges afterwards. Can you think of any like real challenges or difficulties that you've had to face um, and maybe how you navigated your way through it? I mean, I think it'd be really... Absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, for anyone who's got an idea, like we're, we're both so young, our whole team is very, very young and, you know, we're not experts at anything. We... We're, we're still learning so, so much as we go. And um, we've been very lucky to have so many people around us in especially the, the Gold Coast, Brisbane sort of mm-hmm. startup, social enterprise um, sort of scene. So many, you know, people who have been able to mentor us and and teach us things along the way. But, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, we've made so many mistakes, so many things that, look back on going geez like 
I wish we did that differently. Wow. But there's no like better way and there's no better way to learn than just literally we just dove in yeah. and had a crack. Um, and, and we were talking about this in the, in the car on the way down. We were saying if, uh, if we had to, to go back and, and give ourselves advice, yeah, I think, what I, think would you say? I think we'd stay like pretty quiet. I think I think we'd uh, we'd try and give ourselves some confidence. We'd say we'd say back yourself. Yeah, there's this uh, incredible quote that uh, you know half of people's failures is reining their horse in just as it's about to jump, and uh, and I think I'd say that. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I think I think the failures are, are where you learn. And, and Jim was saying this that, um, that without failure, you don't get like the uh, the learning curve, yeah. and but I think a lot yeah, of our totally. a lot of our failure has been kind of like iterative, uh, just trying a different thing and just throwing a lot of darts at the wall and and seeing what what sticks, mm-hmm. and uh, and then running with what sticks. Um, yeah. yeah, you can only like learn so much from the the startup guide textbook or whatever you know uh-huh. until you feel these things physically like I don't know losing your first customer or. Yeah. First, um, negative feedback to to an experience. You know that's when you feel it and you go, oh, "I don't want to do that again." Like I'm going to do something differently. Yeah. Um, you know, it made yeah. me think um, how any any negative setback. It's in, it's incredible how, and it's always hard to do when you feel the emotional weight or uh, you know the discouragement of something that just doesn't go as to plan. Um, but the amazing gift of perspective that you can actually bring to that, um, I remember getting an email from somebody who was just really upset, not upset, but they were very much critiquing mm. um, the approach to what we were doing as, as a, a charity, right? And um, I just kind of took it to heart real personally. But um, a lot of people would probably just take that person and be like, all right, you're critiquing, you're, you know, uh, this is somebody I could, I'm, I'm, I kind of really value this person, but I might just have to just walk on without them and just carry on. And I remember sitting down, it took me that like two or three days I had to just not <laughs> do anything. Don't rush, that would be my other piece of advice. Don't just knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. But I remember a few days later I wrote an email and – I I thanked them for their critique and I I it, it opened the door for me to share even more openly and honestly and transparently even about how mate there's probably ways you could help me and well yeah. the response I got was that person ended up just doing a complete 180 making this real generous donation and just wow. totally like wow. like this person who I thought was lost was now suddenly even more in on what we were doing yeah um not because i'd convinced them or or what not but because i was willing to just uh, i guess take a different perspective on it and and yeah just like raw honesty yeah i think that's uh it's so true like if you if you can make yourself vulnerable um people trust you and it's like it's incredible like uh and i think we found that with um with the rebuilding of the school, like uh, it was just a really raw, raw appeal, mm. and people trust, which is uh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's a good example. You know, you your your darkest day could almost be the the yeah. the doorway to a, and a direction you wouldn't have gone or you wouldn't have known mm. where it would go from there. But um, good stuff. Any any other any other bits of advice or anything else you'd you'd say? Yeah, I mean. I'd just say, like, again, like, backing yourself, having a crack, starting really small with your mm-hmm. idea. Like, us, we were just, um, we were myself just testing this idea with friends and family. I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't even know I was going to turn it into a company. Yeah. But then, like, I just got some positive um, feedback, positive response. People kind of came to like the idea. Mm. And then one thing led to another, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't have this grand (laughs) five-year plan um, (laughs) in place. You didn't. And then someone goes, oh, like, you know, we've got a a coffee pod machine at home. Like, 
can you guys do us coffee pods? So then I uh, did a bit of research, the sort of the, the market, uh-huh. the, the, who's drinking coffee now pods. Now, you could have said, no, we don't do coffee pods. You know, th- we're going to just keep doing what we're doing and, and do that. But instead, you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. And that probably will come to bite me one day. Um, yeah. Entering all these different coffee avenues. Uh, we've got a coffee van now. We do um, different events. Really? Um, mm. But, yeah, just testing the waters with different things, seeing what works, seeing what um, you know, sort of feedback you get. Mm-hmm. And if it's positive, then then go for go it. If, it. If it's not so positive or, you know, you're going to need to invest a lot of money, then maybe think twice before diving into something. Yeah. I think I we like started that. with... Oh, a few hundred dollars in the bank account. Yeah. You know, just bootstrapping it. We still are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. but yeah, again, nothing, we wouldn't have learned anything Can without having a that's crack. That's our business model, fail and fail well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Or well, fail quick so, sometimes. Yeah. I heard it said, you know, um, yeah. I think it was Phil Knight from Nike. He says, well, if, you, wow. if you're going to fail, fail quick. Don't, yeah. don't um, drag this thing down. Like, don't be so married to one thing and one idea like have your options open yeah bob goff another mentor to me he's he's like instead of just backing one horse in a race back them all and then with whatever <laughs> one is like doing really well then get everything on that one you know and it's that yeah. kind of uh idea it's the means um could be anything yeah Co- coffee how do you is why? what you've yeah. found but but um you want to make a difference in the lives of these kids and the future of that country that's won both of your hearts can you just talk a little bit more about your actual business just in case someone's listening yeah, and yeah, they yeah. actually yeah. want to, Good point. to buy what your is coffee this thing? <laughs> yeah get involved somehow <laughs> so nice coffee co i guess we specialize in um in you know supplying offices in the corporate scene so not only our, our beans but also doing machines and, and as i Kay. said pods and everything so we, we found a like a a lot of traction in, you know, um, small, medium um, businesses. Yeah. Um, starting to approach some larger corporates, um, mm. supplying right across Australia now. Um, wow. Um, strongly in, you know, Sydney, Melbourne, um, Brisbane, Cairns, and a yep. few other um, larger cities. Mm. Um, and then, so yeah, we we you know. We go in, if they've already got machines, then we don't worry about that. We just supply them with our beans. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I guess, since COVID, you know, all of our um, office customers, yes. corporate customers. They're not going into the office. Yeah, no one was ordering. And we're like, mm. what do we do? And so we did what everyone was doing, just like iterating, um, adapting. Yeah. And that's kind of when we launched our online e-com side. Yeah. Um, supplying households how so cool is that yeah we do yeah. it actually forced you to like yeah to go to into f- another sure. fully pivot. avenue yeah and, and it's th- been the best thing ever because you know everyone m- a lot of people work in offices yeah so at the end of the day if they order you know a kilo or two for home you know pre-ground just for their plunger mm-hmm. and they like it they'll they'll you know get us into their office which is really cool yeah yeah um yeah, so now uh, we have this like these kind of two business models like running side by side. We can uh, supply to home and we do like a subscription to home where you can just order one off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also supply to offices and we do mm-hmm. like the whole like uh, beans, machines mm-hmm. and everything else. Um, and then the third part is we also have a coffee van which we, uh, which we park you know, outside uh, Kangaroo Point or somewhere in, in West End yep. um, in the mornings. And... And that's been a lot of fun as well. Yeah. So, um, so who d- who's the the guy that has to park the car? Do you have someone that works for you? Yeah, we've got some baristas. Oh, yeah, cool. we've got um, a few events on the Gold Coast. Awesome. This weekend, next weekend, up in Brisbane. Yeah. Get around. Yeah, it's a really good way of getting the word out and yeah. meeting people. Um, yeah, and then I guess obviously, um, the core of the business model is using the profits from those beans. Mm-hmm. Um, from those machine sales into, into the school. So like any business, we we pay our suppliers. Um, yeah. You know, we, we're now realising that, you know, we have to start doing marketing because um, mm. we can't rely on 
on the Today Show right forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so expenses and then using those profits, in um, funding them into the school for various projects. Right. Um, wherever, I guess, it's needed the most. Mm-hmm. So throughout COVID, all of the teachers um, mm. were receiving a bit like an Australian job keeper, job keeper. package. Wow. So we were, we're employing 11 teachers throughout COVID and we still are. Mm. Um and it amazes me, you know, the other day we sent it's just three thousand dollars um for February teachers salaries. Eleven teachers. It's like ridiculous. Mm. And um yeah. we'd love to increase that salary to, you know, beyond the, the standard Kenyan mm. wage, but like yeah, can you imagine in Australia? Uh, it's just what an impact you can have. Um yeah. just like yeah, over there with the conversion rate, um, mm. and and yeah, like just like just one cup of coffee can just have like such an impact. Yeah, um, that's like what we're it talking boils about down to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what's it? Um, so what's it like working together and on in on this? You both oh co-founders. Is it? Uh, do you kind of? Yeah, we clash. get on each other's yeah, nerves yeah, every yeah. now this and then. Is, uh, you're actually lucky to get us in the same room together. Okay. Usually we're. Uh, Clash pretty Locking badly. Horns. No, <laughs> um, no, it's been incredible going into business with uh, with a friend. It's yeah. uh, there's no like uh, beating around the bush, as they say. Yeah. You uh, you tell it how it is. So yep. if I'm being ridiculous, uh, Jim lets me know about it pretty quickly, yeah. and 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 uh, same goes Vice for versa. for him. Yeah, um, but it's been a lot of fun. We've had yeah. an incredible amount of fun. We were saying before we uh, started recording that that half of our meetings are just. Um, just devoted to uh, paying each other out. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we can we can afford some time at the end of this okay, podcast okay. to make fun of the, <laughs> right, each other. Right, and yeah, our yeah. Went. <laughs> oh, watch out, Tim. Huh? <laughs> all right, hold back. I yeah, got, <laughs> I got thick skin. But yeah. yeah, we've got a big year ahead. I think. Um, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, we're we're pretty ambitious this year. Um, a few different projects in the part plan. Um, on the on in a business sense, we're trying to score some really solid um, corporate contracts. Um, mm. You know, national supplier with a few companies, which will be really really exciting. We've just signed a few really cool contracts up in Brisbane um, mm. with some some colleges. Um, oh, that's awesome! And and in our project sense, in the school sense, we've also got some really exciting projects ahead. Um, talking with. Um, just either the principal and looking at the possibility of, of actually buying the land of which wow. the school sits. Yeah. Uh, one of the big problems at the moment is that this school, St. John's, it, the school is situated on um, a lady's private land and okay. we pay a monthly rental. Mm-hmm. Um, but that comes with its risks. And, um, sure. you know, we've put so much money into the infrastructure yeah, it's but it's it like belong imagine to you, renting, right? yeah. yeah, renting here in Australia, yeah. and building a pool or something like a new deck. You know, yeah. you wouldn't do that, and it's kind of what we've been doing. And and in the long run, if we want to ensure the, I guess the sustainability, the long term sure. vision and education of these kids, then we really want to own the land. Mm. Um, Which is a big. It's a that's a big undertaking. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, legal barriers i think yeah yeah oh, and so that's a new phase of your journey new challenges yeah. yeah yeah and uh that's awesome it's uh yeah every every year presents new challenges uh-huh. like last year it was <laughs> rebuilding the roof uh-huh. uh this year it's it's uh all about buying the entire school so yeah, yeah we'll see. <laughs> see how we go yeah. oh man oh that's 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 so phenomenal um anything else on the horizon it sounds like i mean you guys have you said you've got some events, but you guys are participating in an event this week <laughs> on the personal front, right? Yeah. Oh, is that me? You're looking at me. Are you both? We're, uh, aren't you? Oh, you yeah. Have forgotten. Right. You forgot? You're no, running. No, yeah. I haven't forgotten. Okay. That's right. Okay. We're, uh, yeah, we're doing a, a half Ironman together. Like, I'm I'm doing the run. Jim's doing the, the cycle. Wow. And we've got another friend doing the swim. But, uh, yeah, we... So, what is yeah. a half Ironman? How, how long is that? I think um, how long's each how long's your, your your ride, Jim? Uh, I'm running eighty kilometers. You're running, riding, riding oh, yeah. eighty kilometers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just just have have you, Jim? <laughs> like, I've kind of got a bone to pick with Jim because 
Like I've been training like a, 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 a tiny bit, like bare minimum. Uh, but every time I was living with Jim and every time I'd go out for a run, and Jim would be, you know, on the couch or behind his oh, laptop. Oh, come on. And, and – I don't. Th- I don't think he's been training. No. <laughs> I, don't think, no, you're gonna I don't think he's even got on the bike in the last month. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't Make don't sure you don't uh, lose some places. On the day. <laughs> yeah, I did forty k the other day. Oh, nice. That's half the distance. And I tell yeah, forty k <laughs> really. Oh, it was not easy. Yeah, I did fifteen k, so I have to <laughs> run twenty two k, and I did fifteen k, and almost, almost killed me. <laughs> almost died. Well, well, once you've done that. Um, this is kind of new news for for you belong as well. We're doing a bike to belong um, oh, no campaign way. event. Wow. So and it's eighty k's over oh. eight days. Oh, over wow. eight days. So you, you you'll be able oh, to smash that in one day. day. Yeah, Jim will do uh, <laughs> ten laps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're letting people cool. choose their form of bike. So whether it's a um, a mountain bike, a, s- a road bike, wow. you can go to your spin class and, and at your I gym see. and ride that. So it's not, not everyone's doing it together. It'll no, be it's going to be virtual. Anyone can cool. join in from anywhere. Cool. Uh, you, you choose your ride, you choose your, your, your pace. So whether you want to mm. do it on the weekend, 40 Ks either the Saturday, Sunday, or whether you do it 10 Ks every day. So it's a bit awesome. of a challenge that cool. everyone can do. Cause not all of us are, you know, fit like you, Jim, oh, you can just show up on the day. And I think that's the problem. Yeah. Jim's not very fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got that coming up on World uh, Refugee Week. Oh, so wow. It's over okay. that whole week to talk yeah. about and the dis- 80 million displaced in the world. Wow. And and uh, how, how do I, uh, I jump on and join? How so, again, this is like it's we're in the process of releasing. March will be you can start registering for it. It's in June, so yeah. it's a, a little bit ways away. So, anyway, that's that's exciting news from our end. But that um, is exciting. Again, awesome. like you'd do the eighty k's if you knew where it was going to go and and yeah. the impact it could have. And, yeah, um, is you know it's um yeah it's exciting. I think it's incredibly important. Things. Like during COVID, uh, like exercise is the only thing that kept me sane. Yeah, yeah I right. Think, I think Jim was the same. Yeah, like, uh, during that lockdown, I think it's yeah, I think it's incredibly important. Yeah, you can run the eighty k. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now you can you can even ride a motorbike. How's that? I've got this. Oh wow! Yeah, just do the eighty k motorbike <laughs> ride. <in the> day. <laughs> Again, I, for me, I'd probably do that because that sounds like fun. I've never really ridden. I probably have to get my license first, unless I was on a dirt bike on someone's property or something, tearing yeah. it up one day. But um, come out to the farm. Yeah, and, totally. And yeah. yeah. So, um, well, guys, it's been great chatting. Um, yeah. Any other ways that people can get involved, learn about you guys? Where are you um, on the, the World Wide yeah. Web? Yeah, Tell your local office and cafe about us. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. And, um, and jump jump online, like order a bag um, and, you can and, get and see what you think. To your yeah, you can get delivered right to your front door. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we yeah, should have brewed a cup and, and had right? enjoyed some. Right. We have these uh, keep cups you can buy in there. We should have been drinking from the keep cups. There we go. Yeah. Um, and and yes, yeah, spread the word. Yeah, um, awesome. our, our social media is. I think we're just nice coffee co. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, like we're very l- young and and love to learn from and and connect with like minded yeah. people like yourself. We're always learning. Um, so yeah, hit us up if, if you've done. Yeah, it. shoot him an email. You got some questions sure. or. I think that's yeah. the awesome thing, man. How can we help each other on our way? Uh, really? Which is one of the reasons why I was really wanting to, to connect with you guys um, and just, yeah, let's get to, together yeah. and chat. I'm sure this podcast will keep going long after we hit stop on the record button. But um, yeah, thanks for giving us a voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, well, you guys are doing phenomenal work. Um, and I just, when I look at you guys, I, I see right past you and I see the eyes of those kids that um, have a chance at an education and and that's hope, that's a dream, that's that's an ability um, to make for their own life, the life they dream of, but also a life that they could impact and change their country. So um, uh, it's amazing what you're doing. Keep it up and uh, let's keep in touch. Cheers. Yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you. Yeah, cheers for having us. Yeah.